Chris, can you share? Chris, can you share now? Test. I can hear you, AC. Okay. I can't hear Chris, though. Chris. Quite a few people. Mic check one, two, three. You're good, Tony. Hey, everyone. As you already counted to three. Yeah. Everybody, everybody should note the, to sign the blue sheet. This is really frustrating. Can you share now if you I cannot share. I, I can't share. It's, it's, um, I can't share. I can't join as a different user. 10 minutes is, uh, not an acceptable preparation time. Like, like I don't can. This is probably not the forum, but yeah, we need we need more ability to join earlier than ten minutes before the meeting. I'm sorry for everyone that we weren't able to join earlier and get this. Okay, I'm just going to start put the note well up then. The, the menu item even says anyone can share. It's like right. just, and then I go change the role and it's ghosted out. To, it says I'm the presenter. I mean, we're logged in as two different people. So I guess we're logged in twice, right? And Yeah, but I, I, I actually I actually closed the meeting. Yeah, I know I did too. I, I know what it is. It's because you, you're from Cisco. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's saying, oh, it's well, this, country, this, of course. if we have if we have two from the same account, we're going to prefer the one coming from Cisco. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, it looks like um, we were going to uh, hi, folks. So we were trying to swap the duties, and uh, uh, I would share slides, and AC would do mic cue. Uh, but we're okay. Siri talking to me, that's good. Um, but we weren't able to do that. Okay, I put up the note well. Can everybody see it? Yeah, I can. Well, you flipped away from it. It was there for a moment. Oh, I know what happened. Uh, Tony, I let Tony shoot. Happened here. I should know it. Okay, it went back. Okay, good. <laughs> We're so screwed. I just said make me the presenter, and it like it gave it back to you. Here's the note. Well, everybody, this first of all, this is the interim. Uh, this is the LSR interim, the second of two, uh, replacing the meetings in. I mean, as part of the I. Uh, 
IETF 107 uh, LSR meetings. Here's the note wheel. Keep in mind that if you are aware of any IPR, you're obligated to disclose it. Um, you're also, uh, there's also a number of other uh, internet by participating in agreeing to adhere to another uh, other group of uh, uh, and there's all these BCPs anti harassment code of conduct copyright of course the one we covered uh, patents okay I'm in, I'm in Jabber. Uh, Joel's reminding me to remind people to sign the blue sheets. Thank you, Joel. All right. Can people hear me? I... Uh oh. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, okay. I don't want people, but I can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Since uh... Chris was. I was not going to. I do not have the, uh, the 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 presentations, but I will have them quickly. So I have this one. I mean names too. Okay. I have a button. If I click directly on me, it says become presenter. I can try again. Um you can. Okay, go ahead and try. I'll I'll uh it says I'm the presenter. Yeah, it still has a ghosted share content. I, you can't go to the top and you can't share, huh? Well, I, yeah, I'm I'm looking at WebEx meetings file edit share. When I get to share, share content, share web browser are both ghosted out. Share multimedia is not. Okay, well, I can, I can share this. Okay, finally we get started. I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a brief uh, working group status. And uh, Chris will chime in as well. We have, have a, we've had a lot of uh, uh, this, despite not meeting in person, we've had a lot of progress since uh, Singapore in a lot of areas and more discussion than usual though that, that's been good um, this is a record on the number of rfcs we published between ietfs now part of it because we had all these uh mpls segment routing drafts that were waiting on uh a final reference i forget which one it was but it was it was a it was a chain of dependencies so we published those four we published this long time one, El Bar and uh, Anton and Michael Barnes, Anton Smirnoff, Michael Barnes draft on the cross address family traffic tunnels. And uh, I decided to restart signaling. And between the two meetings, uh, we the host bit uh, draft uh, published as well. That's good. Hopefully, we can we'll have some before. Madrid, Madrid replacement interims. 
Uh, we still have the tunnel end cap that is coming. I, I know that's, that's, that's moving along in IDR. And the two Yang models are still waiting on references, the two main Yang models. These graphs have basically had a lot of good discussion with Alvaro on uh, updates on the OSPF one. Again, the ISIS is pretty much done. We're still, still some of the uh, reviews are trickling in from the directorates. Uh, so once, once the ISIS is done, I think it's pretty much done. We're gonna, the OSPF draft will have the similar changes that are analogous. And this one's waiting on Alvaro, the ISIS invalid TLV handling. Uh, a good maintenance draft there that was pretty much pretty much unanimous consensus on that. This draft, this draft, uh, we've had some progress since the last interim meeting, but not enough. Uh, it was submitted to the ESG for publication. What I didn't put on here, there's there's a uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call that? An appeal on this draft, uh, and there was been made on the SIG structure, and we've also got some of the implementers, other than the offers, have come forward and said that okay, this is okay. So we have had some progress, but I think not enough. I'm going to let Chris uh, talk about it since he's the shepherd on this one. Yeah. So uh, I mean, there, there's. A lot of contention on the on the base network programming draft. Well, there's I don't know how much contention, but it's in appeal. Um, if you followed the the list in the spring, um, or maybe it's been CC'd, and no, I don't think so. Anyway, uh, there's an appeal filed uh, about the uh, penultimate hop. Um, I, there may be there, there's other aspects to the appeal. Anyway, it's it's a lot of raging anger maybe that we don't want to touch. Um, I think that the draft as it is, you know, I mean, it's whether we need to make small changes, I, I don't think there's any reason to bring that contention to us. So, you know, we have something that's sort of ready to go to support the network programming document. Um, but we're going to hold back on actually submitting this to the IESG uh, primarily to avoid, you know, taking on that poison pill, we could become a part of the appeal then because it's sort of, you know, an end run around the process. If we're pushing through extensions to support something that hasn't been standardized, that's under appeal. Um, that said, I, I, you know, we can get up to the point where, you know, I mean, I think we're kind of at the point, right? There was the debate on the sub, uh, the SID structure, but I think that whatever the network programming draft describes is what we should support. I don't think, unless people disagree with that, I mean, that seems logical. So I think that we should just wait and see how this plays out. And then once the network programming draft, if it goes through unchanged, then we'll just push ours through too. Um, if there's changes, then of course we have to adjust. Anyway, the, the main point is like, let's not become a part of the appeal process, right? So we'll just wait for that to uh, to play out. That, that's about my take on that. Um, with the yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm in, a, in agreement with that. We've got a lot of important uh, things that are at a technical level that we need to discuss. We really don't want to waste any working group energy on or mailing list bandwidth on debating this one until it settles down a little bit in the, at least in the appeal process. Joel agreed on uh, Jabber saying it sounds eminently sensible to stay away from the appeal mess. Okay. Okay, this one I think uh, Engine has uh, asked for a working group last call. I guess I'm a co-author on this. I think it's almost ready. It's there hasn't been any press pressing need, but it's I think it's pretty much ready. Um, there's. So we'll talk about, we'll take that to the list. 
And then we have these ones. These, these are really working group documents. Uh, I haven't asked. Uh, I, I, I think uh, a lot of the, the first two people have implemented it. I think, I think, you know, just it's a matter of getting, getting good reviewers and, and working group class. I think they're ready. And the Yang models, we haven't really been in a hurry with those. I put, I put the ones, I definitely put the dynamic flooding and flex algorithm ahead of those just because, because there's been, there's implementations proceeding. And we covered, you know, the uh, extended hierarchy and uh, in the last session, there's no pressing need. Now, nobody's talking about implementing that. So I, I think we probably downplay whether or not we, when we want to do this. Um, Yang models for additional features, extended LSAs. Yeah, we could do those. Uh, these, 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 all these Yang model ones, it's just a matter of, I mean, get, getting all the reviews and doing them. This one, I think we're kind of dropping. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in it, the routing for spine leaf topology. Mainly because I think the main reason is because the other flooding optimizations are more generalized. And this was really just specific to the data center spine leaf uh, between those type nodes. So if nobody's going to implement this one and it's expired installed, uh, we're not going to, it won't be on the status anymore. Quick mode, I don't see any others I need to talk about. Okay, we got, we've got, uh, uh, this one, this one's on my list to, re, to, to kind of uh, review and, and see if it's ready for adoption. The other ones aren't a high, aren't a, aren't a high priority. Okay, the other thing I was gonna say uh, regarding the interims, Chris and I were talking about maybe having an interim also, like this one's subject on the flooding, maybe have one on the, on the area Extraction and flood and flooding reflectors just on that one topic uh, before Madrid. There's no reason since we're going to be prob. I mean, it's almost in certainty we're going to do be doing uh, uh, interims anyway. So maybe get some discussion, keep the energy uh, going on those. Thanks. That's it. Okay, uh, I don't see anybody in the chat room on the mic line, so I didn't offend anyone. Yeah, I just got to okay. too many. Where is the one I'm looking for? I have a uh, it's Phil, Phil I, I must have radio it. space. I must, I must have this. It's blank now, but I assume that's because you were just sharing the one application. Yeah, okay, here I found it. I found it. It was. I don't know why. Uh, I think we should suggest to IESG we should have a mortem yeah why get get all the chairs together and talk about what worked and what didn't i can see the uh application now you can see it see it now i'm gonna i'm gonna try the slideshow this time works good Bruno, uh, you tell me when next slide, okay? Okay, thank you. So this is Bruno from Orange. Uh, this is an update of. Wait, uh, I don't know why it's, it's oh. 
Don't tell me. I don't know why my preview did that. You have to speak faster, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it. Okay, it's not doing anything good. It's an update of the draft that we had presented in in Montreal uh, about a year ago now, in July last year. And at the time, we had a, a lot of discussion during the, the two meetings. And we had also a lot of discussion on the mailing list. So it's uh, it's about time to uh, to do the date. So next, please. So coming back on, on the problem statement, because it was uh, was discussed a, a lot in, in, in Montreal. Um, so we are talking about uh, link state IGP, which are running distributed SPF. This requires that uh, all the nodes have the same uh, link state database. Uh, flooding is done between uh, two adjacent nodes. So we need to sync the LSDB. We need to sync the LSDB between the adjacent two nodes. And the faster, the better, because uh, the duration of this flooding is equal to the duration of uh, inconsistency in LSDB. I think or thought we had reached consensus on this. Because uh, at that time in, in July, we had, uh, had a lot of discussion about whether uh, flooding parameters need to be done at the same rate network wide uh, or not. So I'm assuming uh, we, we are in line with that. Next. So there are two main use cases uh, to flood uh, relatively fast. First one is, is not failure. So when you have a node failure, uh, each of your neighbor advertises the failure of the link uh, toward you. So depending on the topology of your network, uh, so at least for, for Orange, uh, it could be between 2 to 50 LSP to LSPs to flood because of a single node failure. Uh, for us, it would be good to, to flood in, uh, in less than 100 milliseconds for fast convergence. And uh, ideally, 0 milliseconds for, for two LSPs in order to, to quickly uh, do IGP convergence in terms of PE, because usually PE are, are dual connected to, to the backbone, so, so they have two adjacencies, so two LSP. The second uh, use case is a partition repair or restart of the node. Uh, here you have uh, much more LSPs to flood, so for example, somewhere between 1,000 and 5,000, whatever the number. And the duration is, uh, well, your requirement, but let's say a few seconds. Next slide, please. So, um, so there were requests to, to have some, some data on, on the behaviors. So we did a lot of uh, lab testing in lab to have uh, an idea of existing behavior. So we use uh, idealistic test conditions it couldn't be better, so we use a major implementation, so it's carrier grade. Uh, we use a high end router. We use the same implementation on both the sender and the receiver, so there is no interrupt issue, no interwork issue, no difference of assumptions, so the same behavior on the sender and receiver. Uh, next, only ISIS is running on the router, so no BGP uh, doing interference. The link is within the lab, so it's zero millisecond RTT. And we have a single IGP adjacency, so there is a single receiver, uh, there is a single speaker linked to sending LSPs to the receiver. So it couldn't be better in terms of condition. Next slide, please. So I'm not going to go into all details, but just a, a summary. Uh, so three kind of test. One with default parameters. In this case, we have somewhat slow uh, LSDB synchronization. No, no surprise, it's uh, as per user manual. Everything works fine, except it's not very fast. It's about uh, communication is below 500 k k kilobits per second in order to flood 4,000 uh, uh, 4, SPs, for example, you need uh, 150 seconds. 
but other than that, it, it works fine. Second group of tests, uh, it's trying to tune the parameters. So when we had good parameters, we had a good uh, LSDB synchronization, much faster, it's 30 times faster. Uh, still, it's, uh, it's nothing to be extremely proud of. So my, uh, my smartphone could do, uh, could do better in terms of bandwidth. Tuning over Wi-Fi on uh, over the internet. Uh, so for the same uh, use case, for the same uh, test bed, we have uh, five seconds to flu that. So it's much faster than 150 seconds. And again, everything uh, runs smoothly. And then the third group is uh, if you try to go a bit beyond the best parameters. So you have a little bit too aggressive parameters. So in this case, by, by definition, uh, the receiver is uh, overwhelmed. So you cannot handle all the LSP. Even in those best conditions, so you have only one speaker, it's uh, a big, uh, big router. And as a consequence, uh, you have a lower good put. So it takes uh, three times fast longer, so 15 seconds. You have obviously higher, higher load on, on both nodes, and the sender needs to send uh, some LSPs multiple times. I just want to point out that in Europe, uh, for some people who might be confused, there's a there's a comma rather than a point than a than a period oh, yes, between, sorry. between yes. the fractional point and the, yes, the non-fractional point. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Essie. It's a comma that uh, some people are, are used to a point. So, so, for example, for this case, the duration is five seconds, uh, fifteen seconds. Sorry, fifteen point uh, one hundred twelve milliseconds. So it's it's much slower, uh, three times slower. Even so, the, the parameters are, are slightly different than the tuned parameters. So this is uh, caused by a lack of flow control um, because the sender is is uh, not listening to to the condition of the receiver. Bruno, I have a question. Um, I I don't know if this is in the. I just read the draft too, and I can't remember if this was in there, but. Um... No, it's knowing the, yeah, so the knowing the parameters you use would be would be interesting here, um, and also uh, yeah, the, that that would be interesting. So to to know like how much overwhelmed like does it if you change the parameters so you you overwhelmed it, but you know if you overwhelm it two times that or three times that or four times that, how does that change? You know, do we stay a sort of a steady state of 15 seconds uh, or does you know does it does sending it faster you know faster or faster you know change the convergence or, it's you know, a valid question um, if I answer that question uh, I will probably uh, need to disclose uh, the name of the implementation so I'm not sure about uh, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a small change and you, you can uh, you can see that in average, uh, the inter uh, LSP delay, which is sometimes called LSP pacing delay, so for the tuned parameter, it's one millisecond. Uh, it's not my mouse. It's one milliseconds point two. And for the two aggressive parameters, it's two milliseconds point four. So it's two times. It's not exactly the, the difference in terms of parameters, but if I if I go into more details. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is, is if they're, if they're, if they're disassociated, right? Like, so if you had, if you went from one to two and, it, you know, then run it again with it at four and eight and, you know, do you see, do you see 15 go to 30, go to 60, or do you see it stay at about 15? That'd be interesting sort of insight into how uh, you know, the standardized highest recovery works. Um, with a single uh, sender, I'm about reaching the, the, the full capacity of the sender. So I can't really go uh, much beyond. Uh, but we could use two sender. Because it's uh, a typical use case. Uh, for example, any PE have to uh, address some neighbors. Uh, so with two neighbors, we, we would uh, multiply the load by two. That's something that we can do, but then, then we have some. Um, Synchronization issue because well, we 
you, you want both to send at the same time. Yeah, it, okay. Well, we I can we can talk about it offline. I'm just yeah, curious, okay. you know, why if there was a, a if they were um, dependent on each other. Thanks. The next. So that's all for the for the test. Just a, a summary. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, what, well, that is that is really interesting that if you have somebody who just goes with a naive assumption that faster is better. They're actually going to go three times slower. Yes, absolutely. Just because you you're over, overloading a bit too much your receiver, and then you have a, a set of LSPs which are which are lost or not acknowledged uh, fast enough. So the sender needs to send the, again. So this as this as loads on the sender and receiver. So it's not a linear uh, reaction. So what's the problem? It's a transport layer uh, discussion, so it's not very uh, new. Uh, there is lots of um, work on that for decades. Uh, so we could typically use TCP as an example. So what we have in the, in the toolbox is flow control, congestion control, and loss detection and, and recovery. And we look at those three. Uh, the next slide. So next, please. So flow controller. Um, so what's the goal of flow control? It's to prevent the sender from overwhelming the, receive, the receiver. Unless we're trying to avoid uh, losses on retransmission because the sender was uh, too fast for the receiver. That's the definition of flow controller. So it's end-to-end -end between sender, sender and, and receiver. And for that, TCP uses a receive window which is advertised from the receiver to the sender. And the draft proposed to use uh, exactly the same mechanism, except the unit would be uh, in a number of LSPs, whereas LSP use a, a number of bytes, because ISS and LSPs, whereas um, TCP sends a, a stream of bytes, so the unit is, is different. So next, please. Side, please. Cool. So we advertise the receive window. So there has been a discussion about uh, what value uh, we want to, do we, we want to advertise and how hard is it uh, to find that value. So there are multiple solutions. Starting with the easiest one, we can advertise a static value, so never changing. Even with that static value, we achieve dynamic flow control uh, thanks to uh, having dynamic acknowledgement of LSPs using a regular ISIS uh, mechanism. We do have a well-known uh, limitation regarding uh, bandwidth delay on, on windows. There is a relation. So if you have a, a fixed window, the higher the delay between nodes, so it's not only the link delay, it's uh, the feedback delay. So it includes, it's between application, includes the, the reaction from ISIS. So the higher the delay, uh, the lower the throughput. Otherwise, uh, you need a larger window. So not, nothing new, a typical uh, trade-off. So for a given size of window, there is a benefit in, uh, in sending uh, SNPs faster. I mean, uh, acknowledging LSPs faster. Uh, because you can uh, have a, a faster feedback loop and you have a faster um, throughput. Uh, still, there is a question of what value to pick. Uh, so, typical answer is whatever you want. So, for example, it could be just like TCP. So, if you have TCP on your uh, device, uh, somehow TCP advertise a receive window. So you can use the same same value. Another option is to uh, use a platform dependent value. So uh, you would use a different value for high end node versus a low end node. Because obviously the drawback is that uh, if you use the same uh, ISIS implementation, you bring a platform dependent uh, consideration. But you can also advertise a platform independent value, just like uh, it is done today. 
this is clearly the, the worst case, but it still works. We still have uh, flow control, and we, even with a relatively small window, uh, we can try to uh, have a good throughput by, by uh, sending SNP faster. Really depends on the speed of the feedback loop. So what short short answer? Um, you can pick a, a static value, whatever you want. Uh, for some implementation, as I already uh, send uh, multiple LSPs back to back, for example five, and you can reuse that exact same value because it's a it's a receive uh, window. Next slide, please. So there is a, an, another option, a bit more dynamic. Uh, you can change the, the, the window, receive window, based on the receiver load, so your load. So you can increase the window if you are uh, if you have plenty of resources. So basically, you're, you're, you're waiting for I.O. You, you can receive more LSPs. So you're waiting for more LSPs. In this case, you can increase the window which is a way to send to your sender. Please go ahead and, and send more. On the opposite, if you cannot uh, eat or consume all your LSPs, you can decrease your window. This is a, a way to signal to the sender uh, that it's, it's, speak, it's, speak, it's speaking a bit too fast. So to, uh, to reduce uh, the load. So it's a it's a relative message, uh, faster or slower, please. Next one. And there is a third solution. Uh, it's to uh, advertise a, a dynamic window based on moni monitoring um, some relevant resources within uh, your platform, within the receiver platform. So typically hardware resources, such as buf buffer space or CPU, or whatever. Clearly, in this case, it's it's hardware and platform dependent, because you're monitoring uh, so, so the hardware or software resource, which are the limiting factor for your for your implementation. So that one is hardware dependent, uh, but again, it doesn't have to be that way. If you want to do that, that you can. If you don't want, you can simply advertise a static value the same that you have today, five, or uh, pick your TCP window and, and advertise the same value. Next one, please. So second uh, tool. Can, can I ask a question? Uh, this is a naive question, perhaps. Um, <laughs> we studied on, the, uh, on this stuff, and I haven't been deep inside TCP. Does TCP, uh, you know, you, you mentioned that the receiver advertises a window size. Does it do anything with uh, dynamic adjustment of the receiver window size? Uh, it's not so naive, and I'm not an expert in TCP. Uh, okay. I, I, I can try an answer. As far as I know, you can increase the receive window, but it's thrown apart to reduce the receive window uh, because you can block the communication. So, but it, it but the there are implementations of TCP that try to dynamically size it with the connection. I, I'm just trying to decide if if did transport take this on or do they just go with, you know, static picked. You know, I know it's adjustable, but is it dynamically adjustable? I don't know implementations well enough. Uh, I would assume you know better than me. <laughs> uh, but from the protocol standpoint, you can change, and um, but you're not supposed to to reduce it. So next slide, please. So the second tool uh, is congestion controller. So here the definition is to prevent the sender from over overwhelming the network. So the network is between the nodes or, or between the applications. Here the application is ISIS. So for ISIS, we have a specific uh, case. The network is not that big. It's mainly it's mainly one point to point uh, link, which is very high speed. And I think we agreed that uh, it's not going to be the issue. But if you go uh, a bit closer, 
there are also some forwarding resources within the router between the ingress link and the control plane. So it could be the, the matrix or, or some links between control plane and, and switch matrix or between ingress and between CPU and the line card and some control plane. So clearly it's, it's platform dependent. And uh, we don't want to, or maybe we don't want to look at the details. And we'll just assume it's, uh, it's part of the network between the two applications. So we don't care about the details. We don't need to look at that. Because of the internet, uh, there is no assumptions about knowing the topology of the network and the resource. So next slide, please. So on, on that, and maybe Chris is not, will not agree, but um, I'm not sure we, we need a, a standardization, especially if it's just for ISIS, which is a high priority. That why it, that's why it was not in the current version of the draft. However, however we, can, uh, with that, we can add a congestion control, uh, and we probably will in the draft, at least to prove that it's doable. And we are not going to invent anything new. Um, so we'll just reuse the existing uh, AIMP algorithm, which is additive increase, multiplicative decrease, which is the one uh, which is very old, nothing, uh, nothing fancy. And it's used in TCP, SCTP, and some DCCP modes. So it's, uh, it's quite simple. You start with a congestion window, so it's kind of slow start want to start too slow because it's not effective uh, for a short, uh, short duration of message. So one option is to start with a uh, half of the receive window, whatever. But one is too, one is too small, it's too, too slow. And then you do a linear increase if everything goes uh, well. And we can do a proportional control. So if you have, uh, if you have received correctly n LSPs. Uh, you can increase the congestion window by n. And uh, in case of bad, uh, bad, bad cases, so you have LSP lost, uh, you do exponential reduction. Typically, you you divide the window by two, or whatever whatever value. But so use the same value that it's on TCP. So again, nothing new. This is the one from from TCP. Uh, next, please. And then finally, uh, for the transmission layer, we have uh, LSP loss and retransmission. We have already existing mechanism in ISIS, uh, but still having a faster loss detection would improve the, the feedback loop delay. So for congestion control, control, you need to detect loss. The faster you detect loss, the faster you can react. And currently, ISIS is a spec assume uh, uh, at least five seconds say between five and ten seconds before retransmission LSP, retransmitting LSP, sorry. And the, what the draft is proposing is that uh, that value could be uh, advertised by the sender, hopefully uh, advertising a, a smaller value. And uh, if you advertise a smaller value, you say uh, you commit to send faster acknowledgement, faster than the value that you have sent. So for example, if you say Two seconds. You, you commit to acknowledge the, the LSP before two seconds, and with that you can uh, detect LSP faster because uh, you have a commitment uh, to acknowledge LSP before two seconds. So if you have no acknowledgement in two seconds, there are lots of LSPs. One, two, or three. Uh, If you're very smart, you can change uh, uh, that value. So if you have nothing to do, uh, you can commit to acknowledge uh, fast, very fast. If you're quite busy, uh, you say maybe I, I will uh, be less uh, optimistic and commit in three seconds. Wow, champagne already. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Next uh, slide, please. So in summary, uh, we can summarize everything in, in just one slide. Uh, so the draft proposed to, to reuse uh, 
a TCP-like algorithm. So for flow control, uh, advertise a receive window. And so just like TCP, we allow for uh, a small value of traffic if the window is blocked. And for congestion control, we use the additive increase, multiplicative decrease uh, congestion control. So everything is a copy of TCP, no uh, invention. And for advertising the, the value, we use uh, ISIS uh, behaviors on encoding. So for ACK, it's the regular uh, behaviors for ISIS. Same thing for loss detection and retransmission, same behavior. And we do need to advertise uh, a few values. So for that, we advertise a TLV with some parameters, so the receive window, the amount of small traffic allowed if, uh, allowed if the window is, is, is full, and how fast I will hack LSPs, just discuss that. So all is optional. Next, please. So that's a summary of uh, tra um, transmission layer. In terms of going into a bit into more details, the draft, uh, the change in the draft since uh, Montreal, uh, following some comments, um, we are allowing the TLV to be advertised both in LOs and SNPs. Again, following some comments uh, during the meeting, uh, we will use sub TLVs one for each parameter, for extendability uh, only. Uh, we we'll use 30 bits value for our future proof on increased granularity. We, also, we have also added two sections, one related to a faster acknowledgement of LSPs. And we we'll touched that in, <coughs> in the slide, sorry. And one related to faster retransmission of lost LSP, so which is faster lost Detection of lost LSPs. Again, we've discussed that. We already discussed that we need a, a new sub TLV, a new value. And so we change the terminology and do editorial stuff. Change, I mean improvement. And yes. Next. So we already uh, received a, a lot of, of feedback, to, uh, especially in Montreal uh, during the meeting on the list. And, private conversation or private email. So thank you, we could uh, we could improve the, the draft. Always welcome. Uh, next step is to update the draft, which is what we have presented today. A better introduction regarding the transmission layer and what we are doing at the overall behavior before uh, deep diving into, into TLVs and adding the congestion control algorithm. And uh, thank you. Okay. So uh, this is uh, Chris Hopps, um, speaking as working group member. Uh, I, this is a, so I, I, watching the slides, it became obvious that this is a very, um, what do you call it? Um, it's doing a lot. <laughs> There's, uh, you're talking about flow control. You're also talking about congestion control, and then you're all. We're also talking that last slide. Uh, AC, if you put it on 15, um, well, it's up there anyway. It says new sections, right? So that's even uh, a third. A third aspect, right, which is modifying the protocol mechanisms. Uh, it's values mostly. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm not object. None of these comments are uh, objecting to any of this. No, no just a bit precision. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah the, so that's cool. Um, what, what I would, uh, I, I think I have a different idea of flow control and congestion control. I, I'm not necessarily right here, but I tend to think of when you say congestion controls on the network. Uh, I think really a congestion control is, is about managing loss. That's how I think about it. So the loss sure can happen in the network, but it can also happen in the router, right? And I think we, yes. you know, we've talked about that on the list and stuff where people have talked about different queues and loss points. Um, so I think when you're solving the problem of loss, that that's really when you're talking about congestion. 
Um, so, uh, and, and something I wanted to bring up uh, that I don't think we've talked too much about. There, I see flow control, at least the basic form of it, if we go way, way back to RS-232, right? Um, you have flow control as a way of saying, you know, stop, stop sending, right? Um, and it's less about, it's less about, you know, congestion control algorithms work off of data like loss rates, um, whereas in flow control is more, uh, I see it as a more active, and, and I'm, I think that we should also explore this. I, I don't know if it will pan out, if it will be fruitful, but, um, you know, just throwing out there a simple sort of idea, you could, you know, look at your first level queue, and as long as your routers, your NPs or whatever are doing, you know, depositing things, uh, ISIS in its own queue, you can tell the other side to stop sending. Um, I know there's a lot of multiple queues and all that that we've discussed before, but, you know, queues drain, so you can tell when the first level queue is not empty. Anyway, the, the point is, I, I think that we should also explore that idea, because um, it could be a very simple solution. Uh, so I, I sort of have dropped that into the flow control category and then put everything else in the congestion control category. So for that, from that viewpoint, um, the receive window, uh, the dynamic receive window uh, sizing, you know, kind of what you're talking about in the draft where you're, you're sort of advertising, hey, use these retransmission timers and these, you know, pacing intervals. The way that sort of I perceive that is a, is a sort of second order modification, a second order input to the congestion control or almost modifying the congestion control algorithm. So at the first order, you know, input to a congestion control algorithm is your loss. You know, your round trip time, generally it's like round trip time and your loss rate. Uh, and those variables, you know, you, they're not hard to, they're there already in, in a limited sense from, from your NAC ACK. Um, and then, so what I think you're proposing is, is sort of like above that, and it's like going in and saying, I'm gonna modify the behavior of the congestion control algorithm. So that's an interesting take. Uh, I wonder if we're biting off more than we need to there, but you know, it's definitely worth investigating. Um, yeah, so that, that, that was my main, main comments on, on what I was thinking. Like, let's check out like the ethernet pause slash CTS RTS and see if that simple thing might work. Um, and, uh, you know, let's, uh, the, um, the receive window stuff seems complex <laughs> since it's, it's modifi more modifying the congestion control than it is uh, just giving input to it it could good so maybe i was not very clear but it could be simple uh, you have many implement or well, at least two implementations so again no names which allow to send uh, multiple lsps back to back uh, so let's say five it mostly means that uh, you assume that the uh, receive window is five. So it's only uh, it's already available on some implementations, except that uh, this is a sender who is trying to guess what the receive window is, uh, whereas it's a, it's a resource on the receiver. So you can pick exactly the same value that you have today, so five. And it's not complex to advertise five, at least in my opinion. Well, so I I'm not sure. I, I think you're talking about the burst rate, right? Yes, receive window. So the burst rate is, is not actually like a receive window because you, you have to, you can't, you still have to pay attention to the limits. So it, it's more like a buffer size, right? I mean, maybe that's what a receive window is, but it, you know, if you send five back to back, but you only can send five per second, on average, you still only send five per second. It's not going to go, nothing is going to go faster. It just lets you send the five immediately. So it won't help speed things up is I guess what I'm saying, which is really what we want to do, I think. Yes, the goal is, the goal is to say you, you can send five back to back. Right, and, and, then, and and once, we start to, once we start talking about, you can send five back, you can send five up to five unacknowledged Right, but then you don't that's put any more limits on it. That's when you start speeding up. But the current yes, that's a, yeah. that's a proposition. Yes. Yeah. 
that's I'm just saying I think that's different than what's out there implemented, right? What's out there implemented will send five back to back, but then wait a whole second before it sends another five. Acknowledged or not. Should we should we do should we do uh less and then have a general discussion? Yeah, I was hoping my comments were just focused on that that one draft. Yeah. Um, I don't know if is wait, anybody else on the queue? That's what I'm wondering. Nobody's on the queue. <laughs> I was hoping we'd get lots of cool engineering design talks, but yeah, maybe everyone's waiting to the end. Uh, I did have my hand up. Oh, we can't. I I've shrunk participants so I could see the chat window. Sorry. Uh, throw a queue in the thing next time, and I'll see you. Uh, but go ahead. Hi, uh, this is Tony. Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that we've been very flexible in this draft. Um, the, we are not trying to say that all of these knobs are necessarily useful. Uh, certainly don't know what the right answers for setting them are, uh, but the point is to allow massive experimentation. Uh, what can we do to optimize performance with minimal changes to the protocol? And so this is just giving people lots of knobs to play with. Uh, I really would like to see people go off and play with the knobs and see what happens. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 I can, uh, that's a valid point. Uh, let's go ahead through his, and then we'll uh, we'll have a general discussion on the two. Are you ready? Uh, one second, AC. Do do we have yeah, Ying Zhen online? What is Ying Zhen on? Got my uh, I just uh, didn't notice anything in either pad, so I guess I'm gonna try to take minutes too. I know I think she's doing it uh, in her own. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, next slide. Okay. Yep. Yeah, next slide. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is start with a a quick summary of the changes uh, since E1. Um, next slide. So we put in a new example uh, flow control algorithm. Uh, note here, of course, that. Uh, this algorithm is based solely on uh, input local to the transmitter. Um, so that's uh, the big point of difference, I think, between the, the two drafts. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the details of the algorithm itself. Um, we do think this algorithm uh, uh, reacts uh, quickly uh, than the first proposal. But uh, the algorithm itself is not intended to be normative. It's just an example. Uh, and we think it's, it's quite possible for people to implement different algorithms. And they're still going to be interoperable because this is a local matter. Um, again, the key point here is that the input to uh, the algorithm, other than the configured values, is the current number of LSPs that have been sent to a particular neighbor, but for which we have not yet received acknowledgement. And this is information that's already known to the protocol. Next slide. Uh, sending, <clears throat> excuse me, sending uh, PSNPs, uh, which is on a point-to-point -point circuit, which is the way LSPs are act. Uh, the base protocol, uh, specifies a relatively large uh, timer of two seconds. Um, if we're going to do faster flooding, then clearly we're going to need to send acknowledgments faster. I think implementations today don't necessarily adhere to the two-second value, but 
they kind of stay in the same range. They might be one second or a little less than one second, but uh, they're certainly not uh, much faster than that. And we think that needs to be changed. I think this is something that Bruno talked about as well. So we're, we're in agreement on this point. Next slide. Um, there was a, a comment on the list, um, I think from Robert, um, about what happens when you get some nodes that are flooding much faster than we do today and other nodes that do not yet support this. Um, this can lead to longer periods of inconsistency in the LSP base in various portions of the network. So we added a, a section to recommend that uh, the, the faster flooding not be enabled until all nodes support it. Um, flooding is scoped by the area, so um, you could enable this in a particular area if all the nodes support it, uh, while the nodes in another area or in the L2 backbone don't yet support it. Uh, so that's possible. Next slide. Okay, so those were the, briefly the, the changes to the draft. Um, the bulk of the presentation now is going to talk about um, discussion uh, points, and I think particularly trying to focus on those issues which uh, are different between the two drafts and for which we have yet to, to reach agreement. Um, Tony, I apologize for appropriating your phrase of optimized good foot without permission, but um, I think this is something that Philosophically, we all agree upon this is our goal. Um, what we differ on is, how, you know, how we, what we think the best way to achieve that is. So, uh, the following slides will go through a number of issues. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So, a receiver-based uh, flow control algorithm needs to get input from somewhere. This is the, in other words, you, you, you send LSPs, um, but what's the state uh, um, of, uh, you know, what happened to these LSPs on the receiver? Did they get dropped? Are they in queued? Um, are they in queued in ISIS itself or down in you know, some of the queues from the data plane to the control plane? Um, and we took a look at at least existing implementations of uh, platforms as to um, what kind of a QoS they apply to ISIS PDUs. The operation of different data planes is, is, is varies a considerable amount. But I think it's generally true that uh, most platforms do not implement a QoS specific to ISIS PDUs. They lump ISIS PDUs either with all incoming traffic that needs to be punted or some subset of that traffic, which could be um, all the routing protocols, you know, BGP and BFD and uh, so forth. Uh, there are varying ways of doing this. Um, they certainly do not typically apply QoS specific to ISIS PDU types. So what happens to the, the fate of LSPs as they're being punted um, from the data plane to the control plane is shared by hellos, for example. Um, so it's pretty challenging to, for the control plane to get the current state of um, all of the, the ISIS, incoming ISIS PDUs. How many of them are in queued? Where are they in queued? How many of them get dropped? Um, are they is this specific to a particular interface? Because uh, in most implementations, the statistics that they use uh, to control uh, the punting uh, is not based on a particular interface, but is lumped on all of the incoming PDUs across all the interfaces. Second point is, in order for 
the flow control algorithm, receiver-based flow control algorithm in ISIS uh, to operate. Um, it's going to have to get uh, updates from the data plane as to its state in real time at a fairly fast rate. If you only communicate this information you know, every 30 seconds or every 10 seconds, you're not going to be able to respond quickly to the current state of flooding. Given that... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I have a question on this slide, though, when you're done. Uh, given that um, we have a variety of implementations, um, even if we, if, when we try to define some sort of uh, platform independent API as to how to send state from the data plane to the control plane. It's going to be difficult to try to map the platform specific behaviors into a common notification to the protocol. So we see these as significant challenges to utilizing a receiver based flow control. Um, and if one of the goals is to try to get Faster flooding deployed in a modest amount of time, you know, not many years from now, and to not impose uh, restrictions on how new platforms uh, need to handle the, the QoS for ISIS PDUs. This is something we see as a huge barrier to implementation. Alternatively, if you use a transmit based flow control, as we proposed in the draft, all of the input to the flow control algorithm is local to ISIS and is, in fact, information that the protocol already has today. And that data is per interface because the implementation of the update process in ISIS requires us to maintain uh, statistics on uh, what LSPs have been, need to be sent on a per interface basis and whether they have been acknowledged or not. Chris, did you want to? Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sort of curious on what, uh, you know, you put out a range of things that, uh, that are possible or not, maybe not possible with hardware that's out there. I mean, I think any uh, ISIS is generally deployed in, you know, higher end routers. So, I, I would be shocked to find out that any successful router didn't separate ISIS traffic at least from data data plane traffic um other than just punting okay. all control traffic i, I mean but that, that yeah go ahead so, so are, are you sitting down yeah yeah <laughs> okay so be shocked because i have talked to some of our implementations and in some cases not all but in some cases that in fact is the case okay. do not distinguish size pdus from you know the general for us traffic the limits that they impose go across all all packet types. So, uh, type. yeah, I guess my my bigger that's comment. Not to say that, sorry, that's not to say that every implementation does that, but there are certainly some that do. Right, and so the, I, that'll that'll lead into my next comment. By the way, this is a working group member. Um, the uh, the these might be barriers, but it, like I. As an old DebBSD guy, I'm familiar with trying to implement things on ancient hardware or bad, you know, whatever. Uh, that doesn't mean we have to engineer to it, right? So, for example, we could say, I, I mean, it, it, this is not hard to do, right? Whether it's done widely or not is one thing. But it's it's really, you know, for, for example, ISIS sort of almost always gets separated very earlier in the MP, MPU stage because it's coming in on ISO. Right, so it it's like it's usually noticed at the very first thing that it's not a normal Ethernet packet, so it generally goes into a different queue. Now, maybe not always, but my point being, it's not hard to do. It's not hard to recognize ISIS packets outside of other packets, um, and so what I'm basically getting at here is, uh, let's not throw out a solution just because we have to engineer to it, right? Because if this if it's if we had a simple pause solution we could present that as something the market could decide on right so you say okay well our implementation of isis allows 
you know, 50 millisecond convergence across the network because you're able to, you know, flood so quickly and our flow control is so efficient because we did this little tweaking on our line card in the MPU, right? And then you have the market deciding. So I, I just don't want to throw out uh, possible solutions because current hardware doesn't, might not support it. It is a barrier to implementation, but hey, you know, the market can decide and people can make money on, on providing good things. That, that's my only comment on this. So here's maybe an input from um, practical implementation of all the stuff. Um, the transmitter is very useful, works actually pretty well. Uh, the receiver, uh, you need very high frequency for the stuff to work well, which we simply don't have, right? So you have to start to go towards things like TCP, that does 200 millisec and RPT estimates and so on. So you get yourself very quickly into designing a completely new transport. Um, and that's a mild red hole. Um, also, if you start to run on such fast timers, uh, you basically have practical problems in terms of um, ISI's implementation. To you know, prevent slips, you have reordering of packets, you have a lot of queues and so on. So my experience is that um, you cannot get a decent feedback even at 500 milli. And if you get 500 milli to start to flood real fast, mostly your burst is already gone by the time you can do something. So, um, I mean, if we put the stuff in, because in the future, you know, whatever may fly with big enough engines, that's fine. Um, but sliding into designing a new transport uh, is probably not the best of ideas. Also because pretty soon you end up again into the BGP problem of collisions, right? So you start to build the session layer. Just my practical input from having done this stuff. So are you, if, what do you say to my idea that I have an ISISQ on the, at the line card at the simplest state? You know, if it isn't draining, it's full and I send a pause. Uh, right, so you start to generate ISIS packets of the line cards right at the very bottom, something Just special. The pause. Just the pause. I, I say the yeah, queue's full, I can't put it. any more in, I'm going to pause. But you have to put it into something, right? And now you have a system that starts to emit packets somewhere at the very bottom of the line card. To debug such systems or, you know, even operationally uh, try to figure out what's going on can be pretty challenging. Uh, but yeah, it's an idea. But what would you put it in? So you start to generate, you know, like hellos. Those are practical. Just have, just, just have an ISIS queue on the line card, and if it's eighty percent full, you send a pause back. That's it. Yeah, but what is the pause? You have to put it into something. So now you start. To... Yeah, that's the thing I'm saying. That let's, you know, we would definitely have to have a packet that we sent back to the sender right. saying pause. So your line card starts to generate packets all of a sudden that the implementation knows nothing about. Or you have to implement it the way that the line card starts to report it back to the main implementation. Those are not easy things to build. And again, depending on the timing, you know, the, 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 your, you know, your mileage will vary, very, very, will vary very much. It all boils down to the fact whether you can implement very high resolution timers very precisely. And we all know the user space. This is a pretty much a proposition from hell at scale. See the timer thing though. If I'm sending a pause, it's either listened to or it's not listened to, right? But I mean, I don't see so, a timer. So, Chris, the comment I would make is um, that your proposal uh, only takes into account one point in the chain of punting from uh, the data plane to the control plane. Yes. There are other points of, of congestion. So even if we were to agree, and, and I agree with what Tony has said in terms of the problem, implementation problems of this, but even if we were to agree that, okay, let's, let's do what you suggest, it does not cover all of the points where uh, the PDUs you know, may, may be dropped. Inside the box. It does. It does happen. It does. If they, if you're not, if you're not dropping them, you're just, you know, you're not draining the queue, right? Then you get the pause, uh, you know, and the control plane drains the queue. I uh, anyway, I'm just. We, I, I'm saying. All I'm saying, you know, because I know there's some contentious on this, so I, I don't want to hold this up too much. I give but, you an interesting implementation input here. The so Rift has something like that. But for the stuff to work well, it's actually far more useful in a different context. And we cannot do it in ISIS because everything is mashed together into the same LSP. 
if you can like OSPF differentiate prefixes from node description, that it is highly beneficial to actually push on the sender saying, look, I'm having trouble processing, please send me only node description. In I, terms I, of deployment, this disagree. is actually I quite... I mean, why can't, as long as the MPU can say this is an LSP and I've got too many of those in my queue, right? It's not a lot of logic and it can easily generate a, a pause from that. Now, whether the control plane, you know, and how to deal with that, I don't know. I, but I, I'm just saying, I, I don't know. I don't want to throw this out so, so quickly. Um, it might be an add on solution. It doesn't have to be the solution. But uh, I don't, I don't think, it, you know, and I've, I've done a few implementations and worked on some of this hardware. I don't. I'm not convinced that it's that hard to to put this in a simple thing into the line card network processor to do this, but uh, you know we, we can disagree too, or we can argue on the list. Uh, as well. <laughs> no, it's a it's a decent idea, possibly not easy not easy to implement. Um, uh, if you really are willing to emit a packet very close, you know, at the reception, and you have some idea, you know, what you're overrunning, yeah. It's something to think about. I agree. All right. Um, next slide, please. You see, you still. Yeah, I, I, I went the wrong way. <laughs> um, okay. Um, one of the uh, proposals mentioned in, uh, in draft Ukraine um, is the possibility of using static controls um, to, to control uh, the flooding of LSPs. Um, start to think about, uh, I, I think, the, the part of the discussion that I think we've, we've had a little bit on the list already suggested that, well, you could do some offline testing of a variety of scenarios with, you know, your particular platform and, you know, come up with a relatively modest number of uh, values that could be used. But I think um, this is not consistent with, you know, the mantra of optimized good put. If you start thinking about all of uh, the things which can influence um, the LSP flooding rate and uh, the behavior of the receiver. Um, you know, these are just a, a partial list. You know, how many nodes do you have in the network? How many neighbors do, you know, does the, the node that uh, is receiving have? Um, what flooding optimizations would be supported by the neighbors? Um, what other protocols are, are enabled? Um, you know, what's your link bandwidth speed? You know, obviously, what's the speed? You know, what, what is your hardware capable of doing? Um, what uh, is your SLG deployment, which can influence the number of LSPs that might be triggered as a result of the topology change? Um, and I'm sure there's, there's many more that people could contribute here. So the idea that you could have a modest number of scenarios for a particular platform say, okay, I'll pick scenario one and I'll use these, these values that I, I set based upon offline testing. Um, I think you, in order to optimize good put, you're going to have to have a very large number of cases that you test offline. So the idea of using static controls um, doesn't seem like it's consistent with uh, getting optimal behavior. Slide. So there's a lot of discussion about comparisons to TCP. TCP uses a receiver-based uh, flow control mechanism. Why can't we do that for ISIS? Um, I think the analogy between um, a TCP session and ISIS flooding is, is far from perfect. Um, Obviously, TCP is a byte stream, ISIS is packet based. Um, key to the TCP control is the fact that you have ordered delivery, meaning if I receive you know, byte 90,000 in my data stream, 
that presumes that the sender has already sent me, you know, all of the, the bytes up to byte 90,000. But in the case of ISIS, if I receive, you know, LSP number five from node A, this tells me absolutely nothing about whether there are other LSPs that have been updated from node A, whether there are other LSPs that have been updated from other nodes. Um, I can't infer anything based upon what I have received about what I may not have received. Um, TCP is based upon a, a single independent data stream that, you know, I have a connection from node A to uh, node B somewhere uh, else in the network. With ISIS, when I get an LSP update, this is going to trigger sending uh, LSPs to all of my other neighbors, or perhaps a reduced set of neighbors if I'm using some sort of flooding optimization. So any event in the network is going to trigger, trigger uh, flooding streams on multiple interfaces. The, the resources that are used for TCP and are used to trigger the uh, adjustments to uh, the, the window are managed by the control plane. We set aside a certain amount of buffer space for a particular session. In the case of ISIS, you know, as we've been talking about, um, the resources for receiving ISIS packets are dependent on the data plane. We've got input queuing, we've got intermediate queuing going towards uh, the control plane. We may have multiple uh, levels of queuing in the control plane. Um, so I don't find that the, you know, to say what works for TCP, there's no reason that it shouldn't work for ISIS. Um, uh, I don't think that's a, a fair comparison, and it's certainly not intuitive to me. Next slide. Flooding characteristics. So these are just sort of the, the, the basic flooding scenarios. Um, I think a lot of this uh, Bruno also covered in his presentation. So if you have a stable topology, um, then during that time, the only thing that's, that we're flooding are refreshes. Um, these can be distributed if you're in a, a network that has a lot of LSPs, um, then it's advantageous to use uh, something other than the default lifetime for your LSPs. The default lifetime is 20 minutes, but you're doing, uh, for most implementations, they allow configuration of up to 18 hours. Um, it's a 16-bit value. So, um, you know, the, the rate of flooding in a stable topology can be very slow, so flooding speed under those circumstances is not a concern. Then you can have a link topology change. This typically results in a small number of LSPs uh, updated. Um, again, uh, the draft talks about how to optimize LSP generate, uh, should I say minimize the number of LSPs that need to be generated when a, a single neighbor goes down. If you follow those guidelines, um, typically, you're only going to have two LSPs that need to be uh, flooded. If you have shared fate, you have SRLG, then uh, a number of links may go down uh, pretty much at the same time. This will have a multiplicative effect on the number of LSPs that need to be generated, but not necessarily linearly because um, multiple neighbors uh, are often advertised in the same LSP. Um, so you know, maybe even with multiple neighbors going down, I still only have to generate two LSPs. Uh, but still, the point here is the number of LSPs that need to be flooded in these cases is also fairly modest. Then we have the node state changes. Um, when you're bringing a node up, um, that node needs to get the complete LSP database if the LSP database is large, which is the case we're really concerned about. Um, this can take a significant amount of time. However, bringing a node up is not a time critical uh, operation, and there are techniques, uh, which I'll refer to as graceful startup, 
that essentially allow this node to come up without being used for forwarding in the network until it's able to uh, sync its LSP database. So certainly we don't want to do this as slow as we're doing it today, but it's also true that we don't need to do it as fast as possible. Um, node failure, however, you know, that's probably the key case because here the node was actively being used in the network. The node goes down in order to get uh, traffic reconverged. We need to handle all of the updates, um, get them flooded throughout the network, and if the, the node which failed has a large number of neighbors, then clearly we've got a large number of LSPs that need to be flooded. Maintenance mode is similar to a node failure, but here again, um, if you've got a smart implementation, you can mitigate this by graceful shutdown techniques, so the number of LSPs, the amount of time it takes to, to flood updated LSPs as the node goes out of service um, is not as critical. Next slide. So this, all of these considerations uh, point us toward, you know, what are our flooding speed goals? Um, currently, implementations are flooding on the order of tens of LSPs per second. Uh, you know, 33 is a typical number. Um, other implementations may do something slightly faster, slightly slower. Um, what is our goal? Certainly our goal, I think, is in hundreds of LSPs per second. We want an order of magnitude improvement. Whether we actually want to go to thousands of LSPs per second, um, I think is a bit aggressive and likely not needed. It's a point that could be further discussed. Um, the relevance of this is it helps us define what the adjustment interval uh, that we need for flow control. By that I mean um, if we're trying to flood um, a large number of LSPs per second and we're only able to make adjustments to the flow control, say, on a 10-second interval, because that's as fast as we can get the feedback um, as, as to the, the state, um, then this isn't going to be very effective because by the time we make the adjustment, We've already uh, flooded far more LSPs than can be handled, and then we're falling back to retransmissions, which we know are going to be very slow. Um, second goal, um, I do believe that to the extent possible, we want to keep the flooding rate interface independent. If you don't do this, then you're pretty much guaranteeing that some portions of the network are going to converge later than other portions of the network. Obviously, if you hit uh, congestion, um, we're all agreeing that we need to do flow control, and so there may be cases where uh, you can't uh, avoid slowing down flooding in a particular direction. But I do think our overall goal, when the network is working well, is we want to be flooding the same rate on all interfaces. Next slide. It seems to be blocked. I, so, I didn't uh, do it. I have a question. I mean, I'd like to explore, as a working group member, I'd like to explore this. I, I'm very confused by this whole thing about um, the same hey, by, speed. Sorry, by the way, AC, that's the last slide. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that I was going to say, oh man, do we have the wrong copy? Okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's sorry. right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, no, just, I, I mean, when I think about it in the like gestalt, right? Like, if I flood, I think if we had a goal of flooding optimally, then, you know, and without loss, if we just did it, you know, optimally. Um, then the network converges as fast as it can. I, I don't see why we should be so concerned about whether one interface is going faster than another. 
yeah, if one interface is going faster than the other, then the node adjacent on the faster interface is converging quicker too. But that doesn't impede anything. It's just if you're optimally flooding, you're optimally converge. I, I don't understand well, why, why we keep talking about, you know, like there's some scary thing here. Like maybe we need to point out the scary thing more. I don't. I, don't... I think one of the, the point I'm just trying to make here is I don't think we want to be setting a goal of saying, well, you know, on these interfaces on the left, because uh, the receiver uh, tells me that they can handle, you know, much more than the guys on the right, that I want to be flooding faster to the left and slower to the right, because that means that for any event which occurs, um, even with a modest number of LSBs that are going to be updated, um, you know, the left side of the network is going to converge a lot faster than the right side of the network. So what? And I think that that's an advantageous. I, I, but it, I mean, so we just slow the convert. I mean, if you were, if, let's talk about, you know, we, there's good info and bad, you know, like if we're talking about a network failure, we want to converge as fast as possible. I'm, let, let's take a pathological, well, not pathological, but a simple case of you've got one really slow router. Why do I want that one really slow router to slow convergence in my entire network down? I'd rather route around that problem, right? And flood around it. So what I'm trying to say is if you look at your network and you've got, you know, one or two routers that are significantly slower than the other routers, this is a problem in the network. Something that needs to be addressed. I think the you know, the analogy here is, you know, what happened when we went from five second SPF intervals to 50 millisecond SPF intervals. Well, if you only did this on some nodes in the network, uh, to some degree you made the problem worse. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I, I got a lot of noise. I think maybe Tony, I don't know if he, oh, he muted. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, but I, I, I don't think this is, I think if you have a case where you're actively harming the network, that's worth pointing out. But I, I, I want my network to converge as fast as possible. And if I have a bad router, I want to know about it. I want to be alerted to that fact. But I don't want to slow network convergence down in the meantime. I, I would agree with that. This was the last. I, I'm going to let other people. Tony's got a queue. Go ahead, Tony. I thought John was first. Uh, whoever. Um, oh, my chat was just one line now. I'm sorry. <laughs> John. Since, since Tony's not talking and, uh, and I'm off mute, um, I'll go ahead and do my thing. Uh, I, I just had a follow up to Chris's comment, which is um, it's it's been too long since I've done this particular version of Network Sudoku to know this for sure. But uh, Typically, the answer to why is it a problem for part of my network to converge faster than the other part of my network, it, typically the answer is because you can form forwarding loops. Right. Um, yep. And it, it, so, I mean, I, I, I agree that, like, sometimes faster convergence is, is better, and but the, the, you know, the trick is it's not always better and sometimes it's not obvious. So, um, I... I I'm not really persuaded by either side of the argument here without further um, further analysis. So John, to speak to that particularly, we actually went through this exercise with ISIS um, uh, a while back where we talked about good information and bad information, I think. And right, so in, in a perfect world, you want, uh, you know, you want breaking things. So if your network's broken, uh, you want that as fast as possible everywhere because other, you're, you're black holing traffic anyway, right? Whereas in when you're making new, you know, you're bringing an interface up that maybe is bringing up, you know, um, uh, you know, just an alternate route. Uh, if you're introducing micro loops because of, you know, um, convergence at different rates in different parts of your network, then that good information is bad to propagate at different rates. So yeah, th there, I mean, there if, is a point there, but um, the analysis has already been done. I'll, you know, I, I I don't want to try to redo it right now in the middle of the meeting, but um, black holing. Uh, if if I'm black holing traffic, I'm consuming you know basically one times whatever that that link was uh, across the network. And if I'm but if I'm forming a micro loop, I'm 
potentially consuming, you know, something like 255 times uh, what that link was in terms of bandwidth for some period of time. Yeah, that's a good point. And I don't think we did, we, the analysis we did on this didn't, wasn't in, you know, full, full, I don't think. So it's definitely worth reconsidering on this topic. One comment, maybe, if I can, um, specifically to John. Um, so I agree with, with my groups, uh, but you have my groups if you have, uh, let's say, LSDB inconsistency. And um, if you need to flood LSPs, it's because you have LSDB inconsistency it's between you and your label, but just be more nodes. So I don't think it helps uh, to reduce uh, the time it, it takes, it, it, the time you need to, to remove that inconsistency. I mean, it's not like origination of LSP. For that, I agree that you may not want to be fast. When the LSP has been originated, someone has a different LSDB than the other one. And the only way to solve it is to flood that LSP to everyone. I think as fast as possible. In all case, you already have inconsistency. So, so let me. Tony, Bruno, this, you know very this well. is not. Oh. Sorry, this is not in. Re, Bruno, this is not in response to your comment so much as, um, from from the working group's perspective, my viewpoint is, the big debate that we're having at the moment is. Should we do a receiver side-based flow control or a transmit side-based flow control? And uh, in the time remaining, this is just my viewpoint, I would like to see us talk mostly about that and not get lost in some of these issues, which may still be important, but are, shall we say, are less, uh, are not really a point of conflict. Tony. I agree on just one comment. Um, I think you're, you're mixing flow control on congestion pro control, and what you're talking about is congestion protocol control, and I'm fine doing it TX uh, standpoint, and that's also what we are proposing. But if you want to do flow control, uh, I think it's end to end. The goal is to react before you, you, lose, you lose LSP. That's again of doing flow control. Okay, Bruno, you got to put a queue in the queue so you get in the mic line. <laughs> uh, Tony, you're up. Uh, so my question to Les is very simple. Do you have any evidence to show us? Have you done any experimentation? To show what? To show that your solution does anything. <laughs> well, Okay, the easiest answer to that is is actually the data that Bruno presented, um, I think, uh, reinforces uh, the point. Okay, it, no, it, it doesn't it, say it, anything about your algorithm. Well, it says oh, Tony, the state I, of the art sucks. So, Tony, um, I, I want to keep this friendly, but I would like to point out we published an algorithm. You haven't. So we're not trying to publish an algorithm. We're trying to set up some experimentation. How about we tr stop trying to decide without evidence? How about we so, sit down and write some code and put some evidence on the table? And if I need, and that's what I spent my time uh, to some extent uh, between the you know this time and the last meeting is investigating if we were to try to implement a receiver-based algorithm. What would we have to do? And when I go and spending chat, our time arguing, not coding, this is wrong. Uh, Tony, in order for me to do what you suggest, I have to go to my platform uh, teams and say, "I need you to do this." We may have different opinions about what this is, but I definitely need changes on the platform side because. I do not, not have the notification that I need. I'm not asking well, you to implement else? our implementation. I'm asking you to implement yours and show us that it performs. Uh, that's fine. We can do that. Please do. 
Okay, for whatever it's worth, so the algorithm is basically a simplified version of what we're running in Rift. And uh, the transmitter side has been very beneficial. And on the receiver side, uh, Rift also provides basically a back pressure, something along the lines of this is suggesting. And um, thank you for the pointless hand waving. Can we see some numbers? So, what numbers would you like to see? Like the maximum speed benefit that is, of course, very platform dependent. I can show you like how to the see, is adopted. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see two implementations flood 10,000 LSPs. Okay. Okay. So, uh, give me the other one. Maybe it's time to stop, you know, uh, talking and maybe implementing something. I, I agree. That's what we're trying to do. Bruno puts up, up some numbers. That's a baseline. Okay, I think that point is well made. Um, let's go to uh, Peter. Well, okay, just some observations here. So it looks to me both drafts try to do the flow control, you know, and the flow control needs to be done by the sending sign, right? It looks like the only difference is where do we get the parameters on, you know, what is the buffer size or what is the amount of LSPs we can flood before, you know, the, the number of LSPs, uh, you know, filled up and we need to stop. Whether this is going to be determined by the sender or the receiver or the rest, it looks to me it's the same thing. So, I agree. Right. So all we are, agree too, by the way. All we are debating, debating here and, and to that point, we are going to advertise the static values. Well, I can say I can configure that on the on the sender as well. If we are going to do a platform set static value, maybe then there is a value. If we are going to a dynamic adjustment to the to the receiver window size, which as I expressed many times, it's very problematic in my opinion. That is a difference. But if we are talking static values, there's not much difference in what we are trying to do. Okay. I I'm in the queue next. Uh, so I have a sort of overall like view of this. I, I think that maybe, okay, maybe I should say the goal first. As a working group member, I would like to see, I would like to see if we talked more about solutions uh, Who and oh, how do you put this? So it feels to me like when we, unless when you're presenting this, we're, we're getting a lot of data about why other th solutions are not good. Right, and I, I think that maybe that's not the best way to get things forward. Why don't we just talk about why your solution is good, right? And then you know, forget about saying these other uh, this one doesn't work. You know, no all the no nicks. And let's just get to here's my solution, and it's really good, and here's the proof of that, right? And I think that then it, you know, then we just get some good work out of this, right? Uh, I feel like we're spending a lot of time as a working group you know, in the mailing list and stuff, talking about, you know, your solution isn't good uh, because we can do it with mine. And I don't think that, I don't, I think we can get somewhere faster if we just say, here's my solution and, and here's how it works. Isn't it good? So, so Chris, I think it's a misstatement and it, it may be easy to fall into this trap. It's a misstatement. Uh, I'm not saying an RX based solution is bad. I'm saying it's much more difficult to implement. What I'm saying is why are you talking about it at all? Why don't you just talk about the transmit solution that you've got and come up with some numbers and show and convince everyone that way why, it, why it's great. Because look at it. Look at the numbers. It works great. And if we I'm could get talking about what everybody else is doing. If we could get 99% of the way there just from the transmitter, there's no reason not to. Exactly. Good. I agree. I mean, the results should be basically the same if the static values are advertised. If the same algorithm is used on the transmit side. Numbers, right? I mean, it, no, but, we're just but, guessing now. No, 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 no. But if you advertise a static value from the receiver, you plug it into your algorithm. What is the difference if you use the same algorithm and you use that values configured on the sender? There is no difference. And why, why is this pertinent? Why don't we just talk about the transmit side solution and show how it works and get some numbers? That's 
that's fine. And I guess what Bruno presented already proves that. Peter, we, can, we, can, we can then debate what is the right algorithm on the sender side to, to have the best results. We can do that before any, we can just do that. Yeah. Why can't we just do that? Why do we have to say Bruno, you know, the, the statics, whatever the average, none of that is pertinent. Just like say, here's a trans, let's go with it. We're going to go with the transmit solution and we come up with this great algorithm and here's how it performs. Like, I, I don't understand. I think that it gets in the way of moving forward to keep talking about why the other one is not useful or, you know, it, you can just do it differently or, I mean. As I said, there's very little difference between the two because I think the. Here? Yeah. So if we have to run around and configure different parameters on a per interface basis, even if it's static parameters, that's not going to make users very happy. So uh, I agree. I don't think, and that's the point that Les pointed out. We don't want this to be per interface. We want to behave the same in all the interfaces and be able to back off if, can't the, do if that. the receiver. Why not? You've, you've got interoperability problems. You've got different implementations. You've got highly capable control planes and less capable control planes. So for less There's capable, variation. I will slow down. I will slow down immediately, right? How do you know to slow down? You don't I have any that. feedback. I have the number of, number of ANACT LSPs. Well, so that it means you do have feedback and that means the faster implementations had to speed up what they're doing, which implies that we're changing the protocol. Which means we have to agree on that. So, so Tony, the, the you I don't know, see how we are changing language. the protocol here. Yeah, we we are not changing the protocol. Yeah. Okay. In our proposal, there are absolutely no changes to the protocol. You are. You're um, changing behavior. We may be changing behavior, but we're not changing the protocol. And there's nothing about what the transmitter may do that requires the code in the receiver to change. And so, if, our, if, if, if our algorithm, if, you know, if the algorithm is sound so that we are able to uh, correctly and quickly adapt to the rate at which the receiver is able to process, then everything works fine. There is no interoperability issue. There are no protocol extensions required. Who cares? I think we're getting hung up on that point, right? Like, okay, so whether you're changing the protocol behavior or changing the on the wire behavior, I don't think that's pertinent to, to what we're talking about right now. I mean, it's not that hard to change the protocol either, right? Our, we're, we're trying to solve a problem, right? Let's come up with some solutions. Now you could say, I, my solution is really great because it doesn't change the on the wire behavior. Great, right? But, but yeah. I mean, like getting hung up on like these, it's like splitting hairs and not getting the problem solved. So uh, again, the concern that we've raised, and and we're talking here about, uh, you know, a dynamic uh, uh, algorithm, not a statically configured algorithm. Okay. If we are to agree that a dynamic algorithm, however driven, um, has a greater potential to optimize good put in in Tony's uh, wonderful phrase. Um, then um, doing so in a way that uh, doesn't require changes to significant changes to platform implementations as well as protocol extensions to me is a plus. Sure. So that could be a selling point, but uh, I, mean, I don't know why we'd argue about it. Like, it's not my phrase. Thank you, but uh, that really belongs to Bent Surf. <laughs> Yeah, okay, fair enough. Okay, I, we've been jumping, the, ignoring the queue for a while. Katan. Uh, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I had a question and then a comment. Uh, the numbers that we saw uh, from, uh, from Bruno in his presentation uh, were they actually the numbers from uh, from an implementation that did this receiver based dynamic flow control? No, no. Okay. So I'm just wondering uh, how does that in any way or results or data do any way approve or uh, say that one mechanism is 
better than the other. Uh, in my view, it just describes uh, what the problem and challenge is. And I thought we have an agreement that what we want to do here. It's just who does it? Right? Yes, that is a baseline. That is not a demonstration of any working code. That's simply to say that what's out there today, uh, the default parameters are too poor. And if you turn the knobs randomly and just dial it up to 11, that doesn't help. And the right number, the optimal rate for sending is not something that we know. Right. So the burden of proof, uh, Tony, would that uh, also not fall for both the proposals? I want to back up okay. to okay. something you asked before. I don't know if I agree. See, I don't view these two drafts as being in conflict, right? I, because if I was implementing, I I could do both, right? So I I don't want I don't want to like let that go by. If as a working member, but it's you know there's they both can be done. So there's no reason to like pit them against each other. Uh, that that's 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 fine. I mean, I was just making the point because I got the impression that, you know, for one of the approaches, we, uh, you know, we are asking for some numbers, but we are not, we don't have that for the other. So, to be fair, I think we need data from both, right? Uh, that Agreed. was my comment. Yes. yes and the second, both. yes, and the second uh, uh, comment was that purely from a, uh, from a you know simplicity perspective. Uh, since it's a local behavior change, uh, the second pro second proposal that we saw seems something easy to uh, implement or roll out, uh, and also get deployed in a mixed environment without any interop issues, right? Whereas the other proposal uh, has, you know, we need something changed on the wire. So, just my feedback. I think from that perspective, the second proposal seems. Uh, uh, you know, something easier or faster to get some uh, benefits rolling. Yes. If yes, if it works. If it so, works. so yeah. Second so, one uh, doesn't work. The first one doesn't work. I mean, <laughs> if the second one, <laughs> yeah, that I think that's Tony's point. Is like, let's get some numbers, right? So yeah, not changing anything on the wire is preferable, but you know, uh, or at least it's a selling point, right? And we can like take all the data when we have it, look at the different outcomes, and make decisions based on that. But I don't. To prefer an uh, an unproved solution because it doesn't change the protocol is sort of uh, you know uh, vacuous. Um, I don't think that's the point that we're making. I think the point we're making is that in order for a receiver-based algorithm to work, it has some uh, difficult requirements on the platform. That's the point we're trying to make. Okay. Well, that point has been made. So I don't know. I mean, we don't really, you know. So it, it's going to require some work to do receiver side, but we've argued that point for like a long time on the mailing list now, right? Like, let's get down to, you know, proving our own solutions or you know, like checking them out and comparing them. If that hard work is necessary, then we should do it. If that hard work is not necessary, then we should avoid it. No question about that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, speaking as uh, as working group chair, then I think it would be good to further uh, further experimentation and, uh, and 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 data and 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 even you know share results on internal uh, algorithms. That would be my point. This discussion and possibly another uh, meeting on this. There's a, Hank has a message on in the chat room that people might want to read. Um, Les is replying to him. <laughs> Hank is replying to him. Uh, is, hopefully that's captured in the. Maybe we could copy and paste that into the minutes or something. I mean, I I read it. I, mean, I agree. It is not completely transmit because we are basing it based on what the uh, the the receiver is acting right. So, but this is just a terminology. No, but I, that's like, I, I love I, that's great. That's a great point, though, right? Because once we start talking about solutions, 
And this, I sent an email earlier this morning saying, you know, we need to have the there's a proposed uh, algorithm, but it only covers point to point. So, I mean, at minimum, we have to at least cover point to point in land. And then once you have that, uh, we can start saying, you know, does it work? And then once you have it does work, you can start like looking at, hey, it works even better if we modify the ACK and NAC behavior in ISIS, right? Not necessarily on the wire, but in the protocol, right? I mean, all those kind of things, but it, there's a pro progression that has to happen here and it would, you know, be better if we just worked on that stuff. As a member. Hank apologizes his headset <laughs> wasn't working. Uh, we have a gang has a question. Uh, hi, this is Xue Song. Um, my question is very simple because we seems are doing uh, some comparison between these two solutions. My question is how, uh, even if we can do some text, how can we do this? We can get a window size from the receiver side and we can get another window size from the uh, trans uh, transitor side. So uh, whether we have a idle, uh, idle uh, window size to judge which one is better, or we compare the convergence time or some other solutions to do this. For both of the others, how to do the comparison, how to test which one is better, if we can do the uh, test for uh, both of them. So Bruno showed a pretty simple, straightforward test. Um, he's taking 5,000 mm -hmm. LSPs and sending them from point mm -hmm. to point. And I believe he was mm -hmm. using a TCP dump to look in the wire and watch for actual LSP retransmission. Um, and you mm -hmm. can see when the transmitter has done dumping the entire LSDB. Mm. So if I get this right, we, we can see the retransmission times uh, to judge whether it is better uh, then another one. That's one way. You could also you can also take a, a snapshot mm -hmm. on the sender of the sequence numbers, right? And then, and then pull mm -hmm. the, the the thing. But I don't know if the control plane is fast enough. The management plane is going to give you the information fast enough. But yeah, I mean, basically, you have to test when all the LSPs have arrived on the receiver. So uh, you don't you don't actually have to test that hard because you can also watch the PSNPs coming back the other way. So, so, okay. so I, I'm not, sorry, go ahead if you're not done, please. Uh, because I, I just want to try to figure out some parameters to see which one's better. For example, uh, the retransmission re times or some other parameters, and we can see it clearly which one's better by the numbers, right? But we have to know which numbers are these first. So if you want, you can ask that on the mailing list too. Somebody will probably provide a, a, an answer to that, especially if you're willing to do the testing. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, like, uh, maybe. <laughs> so I'm not arguing okay, against. Thank you. I'm not arguing against doing testing, but let's not be naive here. It is not going to be so easy to compare the results from you know uh, you know one uh, implementation to another. Because somebody will yes. argue, yes. well, you didn't do your, you know, receiver side signaling in the right way, or you know, there's going to be many variables in here. Uh, again, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing against the investigation and the reporting, but let's not be naive enough to think, oh, yeah, we'll just have you know a couple of implementations and we'll compare, and this guy will win. It's not going to be you can good. instrument the implementation. I mean, we're doing research here, right? So, uh, I mean, I've got like we're like a go ISIS or half an implementation for fun. I could just, you know, literally load the thing with the expected result and have it signally when it gets it. But anyway, uh, are, there, are there more people in the queue? No. Okay. Go ahead. Less. Sorry. No, I made my point. I mean, you're right. You know, we have to believe the results. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of variables and wrinkles. Mm, but actually, I think I have to say I kindly agree with Les. I think the the answer may not be so straightforward. We we mm, because in, even in congestion control in the transport layer, mm, we can just say one algorithm is more more aggressive than the other one, or some other um, standard to judge which one is better. But Maybe it is hard to get the answer which one's better, in my point of view. Yeah, but I, I mean, ultimately, the the result we're looking for is an LSP database with a specific you know set of LSPs in it, right? So as long as you document that you've uh -huh. signaled that properly, there's not going to be a lot of contention about the result. It's not, you mm -hmm. know, it's a deterministic result. I've got LSPs on one side, and I need to know when they've gotten to the other side. Yes, but it, uh, maybe we can take it to the list. Yeah. Okay. I think it's hard to say how to uh, do it properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's good. It's good to get yeah some uh, other you. people involved in the discussion too. I'm speaking as working group chair. Especially interested in actually doing data collection. That's yes, great. exactly. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think there's definitely uh, opportunities for, I mean, we're definitely going to keep this discussion going. I don't think we've ruled out or selected any work un unequivocally today. But no, I and I don't, I, I want to stress again, I don't personally, uh, as a working group member, I don't see a conflict here, right? I, I think both of these, these solutions are not in conflict. We don't have to pick one, I don't think. I concur, there is no conflict. There's just a lot of pointless arguing and not a lot of coding. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that would be a great outcome of this meeting, actually. Yes. <laughs> if we yeah, stopped arguing yes, yes. and coding. <laughs> cool. Anybody have any, I mean, I i don't want to shut the meeting down because there's actually active chat going on right now. Uh, if anybody's Move looking at the list. chat window. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, if we lose the conversation, a lot of times we say, let's go to the list and everyone goes back to their other work. Okay, anyway, we, I think. Well, well, Chris, you started, I mean, you started the thread speaking of when you were speaking as a working group mem member about there not being any active conflict. Please, uh, everybody, please respond to that. We'll discuss that. Or, yeah, or just go off and do the proving. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Does anybody have any final comments? Um, otherwise, I think we're going to end the meeting. Just speak up if you if you have any comments. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time for lunch then, or wherever you are, but time to go to bed, maybe. <laughs> I thought I was going to point out how much better in the WebEx uh, than we did in, in the IDR meeting, but I'm glad he nice enough not to. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks. Uh, see you on the mailing list. Thanks, guys. Oh, bye.